Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast. Excited for today's episode. He is the founder of Acumen Apparel, and what he does is he helps men solve problems with their clothing. I'm very excited to be rocking out today with Brian Rohde. Brian, are you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock, Tim. Thanks for having me. Perfect. So let's start off on a good note. Tell me the story of success in your business that we can be inspired by. Sure. We uh, set out to actually make super high quality materials. We can get into a little bit more about the function and the problem solving, but you know, I wore dress shirts for years in the corporate environment and our dress shirts turned out absolutely fantastic. And another component of the apparel line that we make are socks, I, literally the softest socks in the world. I guarantee it. Anybody who tries them, they are the best. And we sort of backed into being really successful with those. We went through seven factories and finally landed on one that was absolutely out of this world. So that was a story of success for us. Right on. Softest socks, eh? Yes, <laughs> they are. I, it is, you know, it was one of those things where they were largely a functional item and, you know, part of this set that we created. And, you know, we went through so many factories and the products we were getting were just terrible. And we kept looking for different materials and going through all kinds of different combinations. And ultimately, what we ended up with uh, even exceeded our expectations. So, that was definitely a story of success for us. Well, that takes some some drive, <laughs> I imagine, right? And it's probably some disappointment along the way. Yes, there were some dark days. I didn't was not sure at times whether we were actually going to be able to put this whole thing together. And, uh, you know, I just kept saying to myself, it can't be this hard to make socks. But apparently it was. And, you know, at the end of the day, we put the work in, took the time, and ultimately succeeded beyond our expectations. So that was a positive. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing is if, if it was easy, everybody'd be doing it. So there's got to yeah. be some block <laughs> there somewhere. <laughs> that's right? so true. It's yeah. so true. Exactly. You know, you as an entrepreneur, and I know you're aware many of your guests, you know, that I listen to are as well. It's you know, it's one obstacle after another. You just have to be persistent and keep going. And you know, there's plenty of times on the journey where you think there's no way we're gonna get past this one. You know, this is this is the death knell of the business, but you know, you just figure out a way around it and not everything's going to be perfect or exactly how you want it. But, you know, you keep working, you keep improving, you keep iterating, you keep pivoting. And ultimately, you know, you will find success if you just stay at it and yeah. are persistent with it. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. So now we also talk about the bad note, which is the thing that doesn't go as, <laughs> as well and isn't yeah. as inspirational. So I'm wondering yeah. like along that path, is there one that really sticks up for you that you were like, Oh yeah, that was something that I, <laughs> that didn't go well. And, and how did yes. you get out of it? Yeah. I mean, I was, um, you know, I had to find folks who could help me with a lot of the technical services as I describe them for making the garments. And it took me a while to land on the right person. Somebody really had a lot of experience and particularly getting the shirts made right. And we went through and wasted a lot of time. And finally, you know, combination of a team effort, we're able to get things so that they really fit well and had the look and the feel that we wanted but that took a while and that was not a skill that i have and tim you were telling me how you're a programmer and you know how your progression and your career has been you know that was just not something that i had i wasn't from the apparel industry and i didn't know how to do it but i've learned a lot about it i've at least learned enough now where i can sort of check the work and make sure that it's done appropriately but it took me a while to find the right people to really build this out and uh, went through a, a couple of hiccups along the way. So how did you end up finding the right people? Like what, what was it? Was it a mindset change? Was it a luck? <laughs> luck? luck really. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I started with some apps like Upwork and things like that to try and find folks. And I've had varied success with those. And ultimately, you know, I started looking around on LinkedIn and I just started putting in the types of skill sets that I needed. And I found a gentleman who had just left a larger apparel company who had all the skill set that I needed. And he, on his LinkedIn page, had said he had just essentially been laid off and was looking for opportunities. So I reached out to him and turns out he just picked up a new gig and you know, wasn't going to be able to help me. But he had a good friend who had also gotten laid off who had a very complimentary skill set. And he connected me with her. She connected me with a few other folks and it just sort of worked that way. I mean, you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was kind of a random stab in the dark. You know, I just, you know, he was the, literally the first person that I'd found on LinkedIn that seemed to fit the bill and the first one I contacted and that led me to some other folks. So, um, 
you know, there are all those resources out there. And if you just pull on the string long enough, you know, hopefully you come to the right folks. But, you know, I think the lesson I learned from that was, you know, it is helpful when you meet somebody who can recommend a person and can speak to their capabilities. And, you know, when they hear you out and what you want, as opposed to just looking at a, you know, a resume or a, a write up on Upwork or, you know, Fiverr or one of these other platforms. Nice. Yeah, I think there's a lot to to take out of that, really, because I think the first thing really is that, uh, well, I had somebody who was a LinkedIn uh, expert on the show just a few episodes ago, and uh, that yeah. platform is extremely useful for specific professionals that you're looking for, right? And so, yeah. you know, using a platform like that is definitely recommended if you're looking for certain people. But then Okpork is also great if you're looking for, if you're not as picky, right, on what you're yeah. looking for. So, uh, but I think the, the, the thing you said about the referrals is, is great. Cause I mean, you yeah. could have easily just, you know, stopped at him and he said, no, okay, off I go. But, you know, going through the referrals of people that you think are good fits is a great way to get, to get to the person that you need. Right. Exactly. And he was super helpful. And I found that with a lot of people in this industry, like they want to help you. They want to see you succeed. And, you know, if you're in the industry, you know, the right people. And yeah. I wasn't from the industry, so I'm grateful to him for um, being really helpful and just pointing me in the right direction. And it really turned things around or really got us in a positive direction. So that was a lesson learned. And you know, I hadn't used LinkedIn extensively prior to that. Even when I was in the corporate world, you know, I just didn't use it that often. But mm -hmm. it can be a very powerful platform. And I did listen to that episode with your guest who has the business about writing the LinkedIn profiles, which would be really helpful because I'm just inherently not very good at those kind of things, you know, writing resumes and, and biographies and things, but there definitely is, you know, some, some tricks to the trade, I think. And if you can find somebody that's really good at it, it can, it can make a difference both for you professionally and for your business. Yeah. I think, well, and I think the takeaway there is there is an expert for everything out there. Yeah. You know, yeah. if there's anything that you're looking for that you could find somebody that's really good at doing it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. the referral part was, was really key. And I think you hit on that, that helped, you know, whereas you know, you're kind of approaching it blind, you can do an interview if you find somebody on a different platform, but it's always helpful to hear somebody who has worked with them and can vouch for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now speaking of experts and getting to expert yeah. like, practice is so important. I know in, in the music world, it sure is, yeah. but, uh, but also in the business world, because uh, you know, you, you've got to go from where you are and anytime you start something, you're not going to be very good at it. You have yeah. to, you have to get to the point where you're actually very good at it. And so I'm wondering in your business and in your world, yeah. how do you approach your practice? Absolutely. So, you know, our dress shirts in particular, you know, we've essentially done three releases at this point. Our third release should ship tomorrow and we'll have those hopefully ready to go by March, but each one we've gotten better. So you know, I learned we found shirts and a design and a style that we liked. And we took some components of that, added some components of other shirts that we liked. And we came up with our first release, which is really good. The fabric's terrific. But then the second one, we improved on a couple of things. You know, we found some nice touches that, you know, some other different shirt companies do. And we said, well, let's add that in. And, you know, the third release, we're even better. We have, you know, many more styles now. We started with one and we're up to eight uh different styles and you know the style can be just something as different as like grow grain around the collar you can see online that i'm wearing now and you know our practice you know by going through this process you know we you know have a stable supply chain now with one factory that we work with primarily and each iteration that we go through we get better and that's the exciting thing and the scary thing about the business too is you know i feel us getting better. I know we're getting better, but it's also a matter of, you know, we've got to stay alive long enough to keep growing and keep improving. And you can see that growth is the entrepreneur, but, you know, it takes a while to demonstrate that to the world and your customers that, you know, this is even better than the one before. Yeah. 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 It takes a certain mindset, I think, to be able to recognize that where you are right now is not where you're going to be. Exactly. And also be okay with that because you, you got to do something, right? I mean, yeah. like if you had waited for it to be perfect, would yeah. you have shirts out there right now? No, because it's never going to be perfect. And, 
you know, that's actually a great point. And that's a lesson that I had to learn as an entrepreneur, because I am inherently a perfectionist. And, you know, there will be people who talk about sort of your minimum viable product, and you just got to get it out there in the market. And I think for some products that works well for some products you do need to have it a little bit more refined before you get into the marketplace uh but it's never going to be perfect and you know a big part of your learning process is going to be feedback from your customers so if you don't actually put something out there if you're still trying to refine it and refine it and refine it you're never going to get that feedback and Mm -hmm. you're never going to have that learning that you'll get from the marketplace yep yeah exactly and i i think i've heard so many people say good enough you know yeah (laughs) good It's good enough. Good enough, good enough to get out good there. Enough. Okay, let's let's yeah. get some feedback on this, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we've always strived, you know, this is it's a consumer product, so it needs to be of high quality. And we want to build a lot of brand trust. So we're very proud of what we put out there. And like I told you, you know, we've been at this, you know, I started this journey two and a half years ago. We didn't, it took two years before we got to launch. And wow. uh, part of that was COVID. Um, part of that was just the learning curve for me. But you know, we did take the time to get these products uh, up to the level that we wanted them. But, you know, to your point as well, we're still practicing, yeah. still improving, still getting better. The band is uh, hopefully going to continue to improve over the years. Oh, uh, you definitely will. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> or, or, or not. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, it might end up being a pivot, right? But yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I, yeah exactly. I think... We've, we found some things, you know, I, we were talking earlier and, you know, the socks that we we produce, um, you know, we're going to start selling those in a more standalone fashion, just because, you know, one of the things that we learned from the marketplace, the feedback we've gotten are, these things are absolutely fantastic. You know, one of the gentlemen that I worked with helped us with marketing, you know, he said, and you know, he wears dress socks all the time. He said, these are literally the softest things I've ever put on my feet. My mother wears them around the house, men's dress socks, because they're com- more comfortable than her slippers. And you know, we got that feedback. And we're like, you know, we should probably put a lot more emphasis on these because we got something here. And, uh, you know, it took a long time to get it, but you know, it wasn't the focus necessarily when we started, but it was something that we just ended up with a really great product. Yeah. Well, back before I was living the rock star lifestyle, I wore dress, <laughs> dress socks and they were not comfy. No. <laughs> so. I mean, you go out there. I mean, most, I mean, the vast majority are cotton. Um, mm-hmm. So there's nothing particularly special about them. No, they're just socks. Yeah. Yeah, their socks are kind of a little bit rough, um, you know, and when you compare them to ours, which I mean, ours are almost like hosiery. They're so soft. They're silky almost. Wow. And it's, you know, I mentioned to you, I was surprised at how difficult it was to get socks made. We went through seven different factories before we finally found the right partner. And all the previous iterations, I kept thinking to myself, gosh, it can't be this hard to get a pair of pieces of socks made. But apparently it is. And you made the good point. Otherwise, everybody else would be doing it. Yep. And, uh, you know, it was worth the work. It was worth the stretch because now what we have is, is truly, and I say this without reservation, they are the best in the world and I guarantee it. And I'm so proud of them. And, you know, our only challenge now is to get the word out and get more patterns and designs. So love it. You know, people can find everything that they're looking for. So let's talk about instruments to success. So what are the instruments? What are the, the tools that you use uh, in your business to get success? Yeah. So, you know, part of it was, you know, some of those networks like LinkedIn um, and also starting with Upwork and Fiverr. And I've had, again, some mixed experiences with those, but I've had some good ones and Mm -hmm. those have been good instruments. Other instruments for me, honestly, have been going to a lot of industry and trade shows and, you know, they have been impacted and are, you know, much fewer and far between with COVID. So that is another hurdle that I've had to overcome. But when I first started, that's how I learned. You know, I'd go to these things for a couple of days and not only would I walk around and see the different factories and companies that are producing things, but I would talk to them and learn about their factories, learn about the process. I was the one who goes to the speakers in the middle of the trade show and listen to them and, you know, just pick people's brains. So for somebody who wasn't from the industry, those are really helpful just to see how it functions, it operates, to network a little bit and just glean what information that I could and then take that and apply it to the business. And, you know, once we've launched the business, you know, we're still figuring out what the right tools are for selling the product. And, you know, digital advertising is not probably what I expected it to be. And, you know, with the iOS changes, it's 
you know, a little less effective, but you hear a lot about how targeted and detailed and focused you can be with digital advertising. But at the same time, I think the part that is left out from some of the companies that advertise for that is that it's really saturated and, you know, people are just overwhelmed with ads and you really need to hone your message and figure out how you're going to sell your product and what the fundamental core uh, communication that you want to make to your customers to try and win them over. And so that's something that I'm still learning, but, you know, also trying the different tools, like how do you use Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, or other social media platforms, get your message out. How do you have original content that, you know, gets people's attention? How do you explain your product in a way that uh, is easily digestible and quickly digestible for that very few seconds that you may have somebody's attention. And uh, so some of those tools, again, I think helped get to the point where we were in operating and functioning business. And, you know, some of those tools I'm still figuring out. Yeah, I think that, like, so the, the way you started off by going to trade shows and all that stuff and, and meeting with people, I mean, that really is the traditional way of sales. I mean, you, you create a relationship, you get to know people, right? And yeah. you're right about online. It's, it's, it really is a challenge sometimes to get your personality across in a pop-up, you yeah. know, in, yeah. in something that, how do you, do that? Yeah. you know, how, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you do that effectively? Um, and I mean, there are ways you can do it and Hey, we could probably talk about that because, uh, because there are ways that you can transfer your personality into uh, the social media world. And we probably all will need to, especially yeah. in the near future. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, going back to your point about going to trade shows and all that stuff, and this kind of leans into the learning from the best next, because what I've noticed is that when I talk to people who have had success, I find that they're very easy to talk to and they're very yeah. open about helping you yeah with whatever you're doing. Is that Absolutely. what you're noticing as well? Absolutely. Yes. You know, the people that are the most successful are not close hold on information. They're more than happy to share. And interestingly, you know, I had a friend who is in venture capital who had connected me with a couple of guys who had apparel companies, even one that does dress shirts. And, you know, I told him before he introduced me, as I said, you know, I'm going to be competing with him. Are you sure he wants to talk to me? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, he's these guys are great. You know, the, the rising tide raises all boats kind of guys and they were, and they were just terrific. And I'm immensely grateful for the time that they spent with me just chatting through things. Cause I know as an entrepreneur, particularly when you're starting out and you're wearing every hat, how busy you get and um, you know, how difficult it can be to keep all the balls in the air, but to take the time to, to chat with me and, you know, give advice and help me to learn from mistakes that they've made was, uh, enormously beneficial. So I think you're right. And, you know, if, and when I have the opportunity to pay it forward, I certainly will. Right. Um, now, do you have uh, any other types of coaches? Like, do you, do you officially hire coaches for, for your business? I haven't hired coaches, but you know, I have just by the place where I happen to live, I have a few neighbors, a number of them are all entrepreneurs. So I have a few buddies who I talk to from time to time, and I have uh, just a surprising number of friends who have had their own businesses or have their own side hustle that I can learn from and I can glean stuff from, whether it's, you know, got one buddy sold cups on Amazon. I've got another guy uh, who does uh, receipt paper and wine shipping boxes. And um, a friend of mine, she has her own sort of board game. And, you know, she went through the, she's been at it for six or seven years of another uh, friend down the street. She has her own female or women's apparel company called Cabana Life. It's sun protecting clothing. And she's had that for 16 years. So uh, no one official, but you know, they have all been a terrific resource for me. And when I have questions like, Hey, do you have a good photographer? <laughs> um, I need to get some models. You know, one of my friends, you know, daughter does some modeling and, you know, things like that. So that, you know, we sort of help each other out with yeah. resources and advice and things well all that counts for sure i mean you are who you hang around with and mm -hmm. i think that a lot of people don't have the opportunity to be around as many entrepreneurs as you yeah. as you have although i do think that now the world is changing and there are a lot more entrepreneurs now than there ever mm -hmm. was i mean yeah. i've been doing this for almost 15 years and when i first started 
it, it is true. I did have a circle of entrepreneurs that I was already in, which, yeah. you know, uh, which came for the chicken or the egg, right? <laughs> am, yeah. I entre- yeah. am I an entrepreneur now because of, because of them or yeah. whatever? But, uh, but that's the thing is that through, through time, you continue to kind of put yourself around these entrepreneurial types and yeah. they're always helpful because you're right. The, yeah. the, the rising tide raises all ships. We, we all get better by helping other people get better as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, my friend who has the Cabana Life company, you know, I have coffee with her from time to time. And, you know, we started approaching retail vendors more quickly than we thought we would. And I remember having coffee with her and she had this thing in front of her. And I said, what's that? She said, that's a line sheet. You need a line sheet if you're going to go talk to retailers. And I was like, okay, check noted. I will make a line sheet. And uh, it's just little things like that, that I've learned from her. You know, she's been in the industry for so long and She's great with social media and partnerships and cross marketing. And, you know, so I look at, you know, how she does things and, uh, you know, to some extent, you know, try and follow in her path. Right on. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and uh, another thing that I, I'm actually looking to get started is, uh, is a, a monthly uh, or maybe even a weekly mastermind where you get yeah. a few of these, you know, like minds together yeah. regularly to talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. Because, because I mean, hey, it can be a lonely world out here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, actually, the way that I met Andrea, the woman who helps with our PR, was through a similar call. There was just a gentleman in South Florida who is the friend of a friend, and he does a weekly networking call. Yep. And so he tries to put together people of, you know, in- industries and cross sections that, you know, could help each other. And it's a one hour call and you spend, you get, I think everybody gets like three or four minutes to talk about their business and they have a sort of general discussion and uh, everybody exchanges contact information. And you know, that's how Absolutely. I met her was through that. And uh, it can be really effective. You know, if you Absolutely. take a very concerted approach to it. Absolutely. Uh, so now it is time for your solo. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about your, uh, your business. What's exciting? Yeah. So, you know, fundamentally the ethos of the Acumen brand is we want to solve problems for men and we want to empower men to go out into the world and feel and look good so that they can take on whatever tasks that are focused on and succeed. And so what we started with was this Acumen set and it's an amazing dress shirt. It is a pair of shirt stays, which connect your shirt and your socks and they keep your shirt tucked in and your socks pulled up. And that's our signature product right now. And again, as we've talked about, the socks are absolutely amazing. The shirts are tailor fit. They're terrific shirts. We have a number of different categories to sort of outfit the complete man. We have our executive for the office guys. We have our disruptor shirts for you know a night on the town or out with clients. And then we have entrepreneur shirts, which are super stretchy and a little more relaxed. And then we have our Renaissance man category, which is your evening wear tuxedo shirts. And the genesis of this was this, this problem that I had when I was in the corporate world where, you know, as men's fashion sort of slimmed down, which I liked, uh, I was finding that every time I stood up from my desk, I was having to tuck my shirt back in. And also seeing those guys with their shirts sort of hanging out and looking kind of disheveled. And that's not how you want to be when you're trying to dress to impress. And, you know, I come across shirt stays in the military, but they were impractical for daily use. So I created this new system and we had engineers that helped us design these shirts today so they're much easier to put on much more secure much more comfortable and that's what we're trying to solve with that problem is to keep that shirt tucked but also give you a great shirt and great socks and you know our next product which should be here next week are our undershirts and you know i'm sure there's a million guys out there have a nice form-fitted dress shirt but they're wearing you know fruit of a loom cotton t-shirt that shrinks to a third of its size after you wash it once it's all bunched up around your waist and it's you know wrinkled underneath your shirt and you know we tried to solve that problem we have this amazing modal material it's form fitting we cut it long so it stays tucked in underneath your dress shirt and that's what we're trying to do we're just trying to continue to build out products that solve problems for guys so that you know if you're going to make that pitch to the board or a huge key sale pitch you look great you don't have to worry about it you're not having your shirt hanging out or your socks bunched up around your ankles. You know, if you've got that big first date, you're trying to impress someone, you know, you're not, you know, looking unimpressive. You're looking uh, to the nine, so to speak. And that's our goal is to produce just quality products, give guys the confidence to go out and win. 
Love it. And yeah. there's surprisingly not very many people in this space, I don't think, yeah. right? No, yeah, and you and Tim, you made a great point earlier. You're saying, like, how do you convey sort of the ethos and the the, the power of a brand, you know, in a pop-up? And it's so hard to do. And I love getting on podcasts and having the chance to talk about it because you know, this brand and what we want it to be is really a cheerleader for guys. I mean, it's this is about empowering guys and it's about you know giving you all those tools that you need to take on the world. One of the taglines that we use is we want to solve your problems so you can solve the world's. And that's what we really believe. And there just aren't enough brands out there, I think, that are really, you know, empowering to men. And you know, that's hard to convey. You know, we really need customers to try the brand, you know, look at what we're doing, take some time to get familiar with it. And as we grow, hopefully that message will become more clear and become uh, more pervasive out there and people will understand it and identify us with it. But, you know, is the, at these beginning stages, that's what we're trying to communicate, but it's, it's not easy. It's not easy to get that message out. No, but I, I do think you're right. The podcasts are a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You can talk about it in a way that, um, you just can't do in you know quick digital media advertisement. Agree. So how do we find out more information? How do we get these shirts and sure. these socks? So, <laughs> yeah. So we're at uh, we're at shopacumen.com and we have a terrific website. And for the set, which I mentioned, you know, we have an amazing bundler that we put together on the website. So it literally takes you through step by step. It is shirt, shirt stay, socks. It flows very easily. It's very simple to go through it, look at the different categories. And purchase that way. And uh, we're just sort of starting our retail journey. So we were, you know, just got our second retail store yesterday, which we'll be delivering to on uh, Wednesday. So tomorrow, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to build the retail partnerships out and, you know, be able to talk about some of our you know, permanent partners on the, in the retail space. But right now, primarily the website, so shopacumen.com, check us out. You can find us on social media, Acumen Apparel on LinkedIn and Facebook. And uh, please follow us, like us, and uh, find out more about what we're doing. Awesome. Thanks yeah. so much, Brian, for rocking out with me today. That's great. Oh, man. My pleasure. Thanks, Tim. This was fun. Cool. To the listeners, make sure you subscribe, rate, and comment. We'll see you next time on the Work at Home Rockstar podcast.